J. Michael Straczynski, writer, producer, journalist, radio host, and most importantly, my uncle, was the lead writer on The Amazing Spider-Man from 2001 to 2007, one of the longest runs in the book's history. If you ask fans who the best Spider-Man writer is, his name will usually pop up, and for a good reason. For he is... <clears throat> Straczynski has had an insane life. The son of a prostitute and a Nazi, he was born in Patterson, New Jersey, where he faced pretty much every misfortune life had to offer. His father was abusive and would beat him whenever he felt like it. His mother tried to kill him twice and was soon sent to an asylum. And his grandmother was perhaps even worse, for reasons I won't get into. As a child, Straczynski kept a collection of comic books, and stored them in a box which he labelled Joe's Comics. The contents of this box were soon torn up by his father, who claimed that he would never make a living by writing comics. Straczynski always wanted to be a writer, though he was belittled by everyone in his life, especially his father. It was only in his senior year of high school when two teachers took notice of his stories and encouraged him to write more. They gave him constructive feedback and promoted his work in the school magazine, which was the first time anyone had supported his creative efforts. Straczynski has since said that everything he's achieved as a writer can be traced back to those two teachers. One night while walking the streets of California, Straczynski was jumped by a gang. The attack was so brutal that the paramedics were barely able to save him the only thing keeping him alive being his sheer will to live. After the attack, Straczynski was so enraged at the amount of tragedies that life had thrown at him, and vowed to let nothing stop him from being the writer that he needed to be. The next couple of decades were struggling but rewarding. During that time he became the story editor for several animated TV shows, and created the massively popular and influential science fiction show, Babylon 5. He also created his own comics imprint called Joe's Comics, named after the box that his father had destroyed. At the turn of the century, Spider-Man wasn't in a good spot. Marvel had just relaunched the title with writer Howard Mackey, who made some questionable choices during his run. Mary Jane got blown up, Peter kissed a child, Aunt May was racist, but hey, how could you, how could you be mad at the guy? Just, just look, at his, look at his smile. It's safe to say that the run was not very well received, and Marvel would have to switch things up in order to keep the book from dying. And so the big boys at Marvel travelled to a comic convention in Chicago, hoping to find new talent which would revive the company. Coincidentally, Straczynski was also at the convention, appearing as a guest of honour for his work in television and comics. He was walking around the dealer's room when a thief ran past him, attempting to steal thousands of dollars worth of artwork. While everyone else stayed clear of the thief, Straczynski grabbed him and took him to the ground. After the police had arrived, Marvel approached Straczynski and offered him the job of writer on The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm sure it was more the quality of his work and not his heroics that got him the job, but you never know. Right from the first issue, Straczynski was already making his mark on the book. Through the introduction of the character Ezekiel, he took the mythos of Spider-Man and flipped it upside down, asking if Peter Parker got his powers by chance, or whether it was always destined to happen. While never explicitly proven, it is suggested that Peter's powers were granted to him by a multiversal deity who chose Peter as its avatar. Each issue revealed more about this mystical side of Spider-Man with powerful new creatures such as Morlan and Shathra hunting Peter for his connection to this spider god. While this more supernatural direction was controversial at the time, sales figures started to rebound. The book was back on the right track, 
with the quality of the writing the best it had been in a long time. It was mature, it was real, it was brand new, and yet it still felt like Spider-Man. It wasn't just the origin that Straczynski expanded upon. He reconstructed the core cast of characters into what he thought they should be, more complex, believable people. In my opinion, Straczynski's Spider-Man is the definitive version of the character. He's everything Peter Parker should be. He refuses to let injustice win and does everything in his power to protect innocence. He has notoriously bad luck and yet he still keeps going no matter what. He keeps things light-hearted but he can switch to being super serious if he needs to be. His wisecracks are as clever as they are hilarious and a lot of the time they only work because they're coming from him, not anyone else. Through the narration boxes present in almost every page, you get to see his thought process when working a problem, really allowing his intelligence to shine through. In Straczynski's run, we got to spend more time with Peter outside of the costume. He became a high school teacher, which not only gave him something to do that wasn't Spider-Man, but it allowed him to pursue his love of science and help others in a different kind of way. Even before he started teaching, Peter sticks his neck out for a vulnerable student called Joey, remembering what it was like when he was at school and had people ganging up on him for no reason. Peter really tries to make a difference to these kids, despite other teachers not caring as much. One of my favourite arcs is when Peter notices that one of his students, a girl called Jennifer, keeps falling asleep in his classes, and so he takes a genuine interest in her life and finds out that she's been living on the streets with her drug-addicted brother. Peter does his best to help her both as a teacher and as Spider-Man, with Straczynski blurring the line between the two sides of Peter's life. He tells a similar story later in the run, with a student called Melissa, whose brother was put in jail by Spider-Man. Peter then has to reflect on the consequences of his crime fighting, and what happens to the families of those he puts away. Straczynski uses Peter as a vessel to tell a message from his own life. Joey, Jennifer, and Melissa all end up in a better place because their teacher showed an interest in them, just like decades prior in Straczynski's senior year of high school. Another thing I like about this Peter is all of his little quirks that remain consistent throughout the run. Like, whenever someone refers to the Spider-Man suit as a costume, he can't help but correct them and say it's a uniform. Also, Peter and other characters like to shit on New Jersey a lot. A reference to Straczynski's own upbringing there and how much he hated it. I'd like to think that there's some readers in New Jersey that are just reading it and being like, What the fuck, bro? Peter's expertly crafted characterization is one thing, but it's his relationship with the supporting cast which really makes it special. Mackie's run ended with Peter and Mary Jane separated, and so Straczynski used his early issues slowly building up to their reunion. It's so satisfying when they finally get back together, because Straczynski wrote them to be perfect for each other. They have perfect chemistry and it's just so fun hearing them talk to one another, no matter the situation. It was the way this relationship was written which probably cemented Peter and MJ as one of the best comic book couples of all time. MJ isn't sidelined by the plot either, she gets room to breathe in her own subplots which focus on her unsatisfying life as a model and subsequent transition to a more fulfilling acting career. Aunt May was often a one-dimensional character in the original comics. Her only function was either dying or making sure Peter had his underwear on the right way. Straczynski fully renovated her character, giving her the all-star treatment. She has a strong spirit, always holding on to hope despite all the tragedies in her life. Her old age has made her wise, allowing her to pass important lessons on to Peter and Mary Jane. Like Mary Jane, she gets her own things to do, sometimes becoming the focus of whole issues. Straczynski allowed his characters to progress like real people, and one of those progressions was May finally discovering Peter's secret identity. After coming to terms with it on her own, she confronts Peter in what is probably one of the greatest Spider-Man issues ever written. The whole issue is devoted to the conversation between Peter and Aunt May, in which they sit down and reflect on the years they lost to a lie. It gives Aunt May some well-deserved credit, shattering the weak old lady stereotype she was previously well known for. It's truly some of the greatest character work in comics, and it does make me a wee bit sad that the MCU just sort of glossed over this reveal. 
There are a good handful of recurring characters as well. Ezekiel is a very captivating character because he shows what Peter would have become if he would used his powers for personal gain. Straczynski shows the positives and negatives of this choice and it's just very interesting to read and see how the arc pans out. There's also Lamont, a charming police lieutenant who helps Spider-Man solve crimes on more than one occasion. He gives lots of useful insight into how the NYPD functions in the Marvel Universe, and it's cool to see Spider-Man working together with the law for the greater good. Leo Zielinski is a tailor who provides Spider-Man with spare costumes after he saved his life, and soon offers him a new suit based on his own improvements. It's just nice to see these characters pop up whenever the story needs them to, and it never feels random because of how good Straczynski's world building is. His attention to detail creates a real sense of continuity, which is appreciated given the long history of the book he's working with. There's also the people of New York who interact with Spider-Man in their own little unique ways, whether it's a man shouting at Spider-Man for keeping him awake at night, or a newspaper seller telling a customer about the time his stand was destroyed during one of Spider-Man's battles, or Spider-Man talking about popcorn with a guy on his balcony. There are a lot of little moments like these which just inject so much life into the city. I love just how small scale the conflicts are. Sure, there may be a end of the world disaster every so often, but a lot of the times it's very grounded and personal. The bad guys are usually small time crooks who have ties to the city, with the occasional appearance of a classic villain to appease long time fans. Straczynski takes full advantage of the friendly neighbourhood aspect of Spider-Man, whether it is helping a kid at school, or searching for missing citizens, or one of my favourite issues where Spider-Man faces a little kid who stole a gun from his dad and solves the conflict by just talking to him. It's these small conflicts which let the book tackle serious human issues, like drugs, corruption, guilt, relationships, just to name a few. There's even an issue dedicated to 9-11, which was released just less than a month after the attack, with the aim of comforting New Yorkers through a difficult time. The book has New York at its core, and so the problems it faces are front and centre. That's not to say that every issue is a downer, the book can be really funny when it wants to be, but not in a goofy, random way, more of a human way. The humour works because it plays off the characters and the dynamic between them, and it always fits in with the tone of each issue. Also, I like the part where Spider-Man just fucking chucks a guy into oblivion and he explodes. After 38 issues, artist John Romita Jr. left, with Mike Diodato Jr. taking over alongside Ron Gartney. This departure basically splits the run into two halves, with the second half not being as well received as the first. This was down to editor-in-chief Joe Quesada, Joe Quesada, who meddled with some of Straczynski's stories and made them a bit shit. I'm not really going to get into it, Owen Lakes Comics already has two fantastic videos on it and you should definitely give him a watch if you're interested. Leave him a like, you know, he must have spent so much money on that thumbs up graphic he's always putting in his videos now, so you're welcome Owen, I know you need the help. What I will say is that despite the story being derailed by Fucking clever clogs over here. The quality of Straczynski's writing never suffered. I love the Civil War arc and how perfectly it handles the pressure around Peter's decision to unmask. It's the most mature a Spider-Man comic has ever been and it had genuine consequences that Peter had to take responsibility for. It also allowed the dynamic between Peter, MJ and May to shine, with them supporting each other throughout the event. There's also a particular moment during all the chaos when Peter sits down on a bench and talks to a vision of his younger self. It's a beautiful three page scene which shows how much Peter has progressed since he first got his powers, and how his outlook on life has changed. How things will always remain difficult as you become an adult, they just get more complicated. Even towards the very end of his run, there are some genuinely emotional moments that tug on your heartstrings making you realise how much you care about Straczynski's characters and how perfectly they've been built up. I think that ultimately the main theme of Straczynski's run is strength. Sure, Spider-Man can throw a building at someone, but it's his willpower that's stronger. His loved ones give him strength even if the whole world is against him. In one of Peter's many monologues, he tells the reader that it's MJ who makes him strong. 
When he reflects on his conversation with Aunt May, he says how proud of her he is for being so strong. Even Jennifer is described as having such pain in her voice, but also such strength. There are multiple times throughout the story where Peter is beaten down, trapped, and broken, with the only thing keeping him alive being his will to keep going, to keep fighting, taken directly from Straczynski's own near-death experience with the gang in California. By injecting so many elements from his own life into the story, Straczynski has inspired many, many readers, including myself, to hold on to hope. And he did this through a comic book. I was going to list all the messages and life lessons that come with both Straczynski's life and his run on Amazing Spider-Man, but I think it's best you read it and figure it out for yourself. There are a lot of things I didn't include in this video, and it's because I can't really do them justice by just telling you about them. This run took the craziest of ideas and used them to tell a very personal and human story. It fully embraced the campy nature of comic books, while also critiquing them with just the right amount of meta-humour. It wasn't afraid to do things differently, to try new things and expand upon the old. I do miss this more mature era of Spider-Man. The early 2000s had Straczynski's run, Bendis on Ultimate Spider-Man, and the Raimi films, all of which tackled important issues through well-written characters. Some people say there shouldn't be real problems in comic books, that they should be an escape from the reality of our everyday lives, but I disagree. I think they're a perfect way for us to see our own lives through the lenses of the characters we know and love. Because that's what Straczynski did. He used the characters of Spider-Man to tell stories from his own life, in the hopes that people would relate and see that they can make a change. That they can be like Spider-Man and not stand for injustice. Find strength in their loved ones. Never let anyone stop them from being who they want to be, and no matter what, remain strong. I borrowed a lot of stuff from Straczynski's biography, Becoming Superman, which is probably in my top three books of all time. Well, not that I've read more than three books. I've really condensed parts of his life for the purposes of this video, so I definitely recommend reading it to get the full story. What I've talked about is really just the tip of the iceberg. If you want, I can send you my copy. Just take a photo of both sides of your credit card and send it to my Twitter. I think it's ironic how one of the main messages of the book is to keep writing no matter what, and yeah, I've procrastinated writing this video for over half a year. Thank you to that one guy whose video had my video in his recommended section and single-handedly doubled my views. Stronger than 616. Hmm.